Hello everyone, I trust you're doing well. This is PB here. And um, one of the things I want to really share about today is about how you can pray and see results, how you can fast and see results. You know, one of the things I really realize is that a lot of people are frustrated and really disappointed because in their own way, they've prayed the way they can, they fasted the way they can, but they don't see results. And they're wondering that, where is God in the midst of this? How can I go on a three-day fast? How can I spend so much time praying? And there is no result. Let me help you a little. If you have an ATM card and you have money inside, if you don't know how to use the ATM card and you go to the ATM machine, despite the fact that you have money inside, what will happen? You still will not be able to get money out of it. You wonder, is it the ATM card? Is it the ATM machine? Or is it the fact that I don't have enough funds? But the truth is that you have funds, the ATM card is valid, you know the pain, the ATM machine is working, but you need to know how it works. Most people practice prayers, most people practice fasting, but do not understand the dynamics that makes it work. So when they practice it, they just practice it in darkness. Sometimes they get it, it's like a fluke, they get it and it works. And some other times they don't get it and it doesn't work. So today, I want to reveal the principles behind life-changing prayer and fasting. So let's back down a little. First of all, what is fasting? Fasting is a special spiritual exercise in which we intentionally deny ourselves regular eating for a while for the purpose of praying and spending time with God. Matthew chapter 6 says this. It says, when you fast, it says, your father that see you fasting will reward you publicly. What does the Bible say? Isaiah 58. He says there is a fast that God responds to. So there's a fast that God responds to, but there's also a fast that God does not respond to. The Bible is full of God saying people prayed and because the approach of the methodology was not right, their prayers could not bring about change. And I'm saying so because let's say you're praying for a child. Let's say you're praying for a husband or you're praying for a financial turnaround and you're wondering, where is God in all of those things? Could you please consider for a moment that maybe the reason my prayer is not effective is that I really don't know how to pray. In this teaching, I hope to be able to tell you clearly and create patterns for you that if you follow, you will begin to see drastic results as a, res you know, as a function of your prayer and fasting. If you've ever seen results of fasting and prayer before, this teaching will provide you a pattern that if you can follow, you will see it. You will see the fact that I can pray for a turnaround and I actually see a turnaround. If you're familiar with our teaching and ministry, you will understand that loads and loads of people are always testifying of either I was delayed in marriage and you would pray together and I got married. My finances was crumbling and there was a turnaround and, you know, or I couldn't have a baby and that happened. So let's get back to the teaching. What is fasting? Fasting is an intentional desire. So you cannot fast subconsciously. Someone says, well, you know, I did eat in about till two o'clock. I just, I was fasting. That's not a fast. You have to be intentional. You have to separate yourself. Fasting connotes denial. It connotes denial. And the other thing about fasting is, is you need to fast with the intention of spending time with God. There's a lot of fasting to lose weight today. That is not the Bible fast. That is not the fast that can produce results. This kind of fast is chosen. This kind of fast is predetermined. The focus of this fast that changes things, that is life-changing, is the fact that I want to spend time with God. And let me say something quickly. This is where a lot of people miss it. People say, well, I'm fasting. Listen to me. Prayer is the main thing. Fasting is the addition to prayer. So people say we have fasting and prayer. That's the wrong order. What it is is that we have prayer and fasting. Fasting is the addition. Do you know why? Because fasting is like a catalyst. If there's nothing to catalyze, the catalyst is paralyzed. I'm saying so because a lot of people stay away from food and they're fasting, but they're not praying. Any prayer without, sorry, any fasting without prayer is hunger strike. And if fasting without prayer is hunger strike. So fasting is just not about missing meal. It's a deliberate attempt to offer ourselves to God at this time. Fasting is not just about me eating meal. Fasting, listen, prayer without, sorry, fasting without prayer is a 
total waste of time. I call it hunger strike. That's what I call it, hunger strike. So when you're fasting, you must be taking in the word of God and you must be spending time to pray. If you're not doing two things, spending time to pray, taking in the word of God, you just, maybe you're dieting. That's not the Bible fast. In the Bible, when people fasted and they saw result, they spent time to pray, they spent time to fast. You know, some people would just, you know, fast and spend all the days and work and soak their semen to work. And when it's about the closing time, oh, 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 let me go and pray and fast. And that's not a fast. If you fast in the consciousness, it's an intention. It's there during the day. And my mind is on something. It's the concept of fasting that I'm waiting on the Lord. If you're waiting on the Lord, it's like going to a restaurant and a waiter is waiting on you. Listen to me. Why are you still checking that and talking to your friend on the table? No matter what the waiter is doing, he's paying attention to you. When you're fasting, you're really paying attention. There is a consciousness that I'm waiting on the Lord. There is a huge consciousness. This is what people miss. I've seen people that fast and put on like a series, a movie that has series that lasts them for six hours or eight hours. And when it starts, oh, wow, let me just go and eat. Some people bury themselves into work. Some people do something that make them forget. All those things are not effective with to fast. That's why you fast and lose the results. So I'll say, what's your fast look like? I really believe that the fast starts at midnight. And um, what we normally advise is that from 3 p.m. downward, you can take time and begin to break. But during the fast, what do you do that you stay away from food? And someone says, um, I'm, on, I'm on medications, what should I do? If you're on medications, maybe you don't need to fast at this time. If you're pregnant, maybe you don't need to fast at this time. And God knows and understands that. You see, God is not difficult. He knows where you are. He knows what you can do. So what happens when we fast? The first thing that happens is this. Fasting increases our spiritual focus. And, you know, when there's focus, I mean, focus amplifies everything. Focus amplifies everything. Where there's focus, focus amplifies everything. Focus opens the door. When does that amplify spiritual focus for supernatural intervention? The Bible is full of stories of people that had a need, a financial need. They had a material need. And as they fasted, what happened? Fasting actually amplifies spiritual focus. And bam, there was a breakthrough. The second thing fasting does is this, fasting increases spiritual sensitivity. Some of you have been trying to know what God wants you to do, how God wants you to go. You know what fasting does? When you begin to fast, you become so sensitive. The reason why is that the flesh, the human senses have been subdued in the place of fasting. Then your spirit is actually gained some kind of dominion. That's what happens in fasting. This is so powerful. So in the place of fasting, the, the way the Bible says in Isaiah 58 is this. It says, your light shall come breaking. Light is a biblical symbol for direction. Maybe you're wondering, do I migrate? What business do I do? Do I invest? Maybe it's time to fast and get some, you know, some sensitivity heightened so they can make the right decision. I I'm saying this because do you know that just before Jesus Christ would make huge decision, he would separate himself to pray. Sometimes before the ministry, he separated himself to fast for 40 days. Listen to me. If there's someone that did not need to pray, it was our Lord Jesus Christ. If there's someone that did not need to fast, it was our Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus, the Son of the living God, God himself, could fast and pray, I think you need to spend time from time to time to fast and pray. The third thing fasting does is this. Fasting breaks and curbs sinful human desires. Some people have really struggled with an addiction, struggled with a negative thought pattern. You know what happens when they fast? It's just because of staying away from food and practicing fast. Fasting has a way to crush it. It crushes it. It crushes that greed. It crushes that loss. It crushes that evil. It crushes it in a very huge way. Three things that your fasting does. There's amplified spiritual focus. So you find yourself growing. You find, you find that because when there's amplified spiritual focus, there's huge intervention by the Spirit of God. There's literally a stepping in of the power of God in a way you've never seen before. When people fast, one of the things they experience when they fast and they pray, they experience such an avalanche, such a, such a mighty intervention of God's power. And that's what you expect. The second thing that happened that the spiritual senses is so, is so, it's like at another level. All of a sudden, they can receive spiritual guidance. And the third thing is that the flesh, the sinful nature, the sinful human tendency rather, is broken. So how do I fast effectively? I want to give you some guidelines. And specifically for all of you joining on this fast, 
the first thing you want to do is this. You want to determine the purpose of the fast. You know why? When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Why am I fasting? The second thing is this. You want to have clearly defined goals. You know, these three days I'm fasting, what do I want? I want God to give me direction about my husband or my wife. I want God to give me, speak to me about my relocation. I want God to show me a plan on how I can achieve this 250 million naira target I have for my business. You must have not just goals, clearly defined outcome. Listen, what do I want from the season of fasting? I want to just be able to break an addiction. I just want to fall in love with Jesus deeper. And when you have this clearly defined goals, the third thing you have to do is to write them down. Is to write them down. Have a place. You can have it on your phone. You can have it on the book. This, this shows how serious you have about your fasting. That's why your order fasting has not worked. You just fasted. Because if you don't have the clearly defined outcomes, when God answers your prayers, how will you know? Some people say, I don't want God to bless me. That's so vague. That's so vague. Nobody can even be able to measure that. But, you know, so write them down. Why is it good to write them down? You can always go back to it. And it's always good because when you see your prayers answered, you know what it does to you? It helps you develop confidence in prayers, which a lot of people lack. That's why people are looking for people to pray with them because they don't have faith in their own prayer. The other thing, fasting, the other thing, this is another way you need to, you know, this is another way you need to, um, what you need to do to make your fast effective. I said, write down clearly defined outcome. I will suggest to you that make it free. So once it's why free, it's not a special number. I just think that once your goals and desires from a fasting season is so many, you'll lose focus on it. You can do free, then take free at another time, and we can go that way. Because sometimes too many outcomes distract. And when you write the outcome, let them be clear, let them be specific. This is the way I want you to write them. Write them as your, listen to me, this instruction, this is the next step number four. Write down the your outcome as your current reality with deep emotions. I'll give an example. If I'm writing my outcome for fasting and prayer, I don't say, Lord, I need something. Lord, I want something. I want to speak from a point of faith. So I will write it with a point of faith because this is me speaking. So I'm going to say, number one prayer request. What's my number one prayer request? I'm super chilled and excited that I have received my job that pays 10 million per annum. Praise God. Look at what I mean. See, see how it brings faith to me. I'm super chilled and excited that I have received my job that pays 10 million per annum. One, it's specific. Number two, it shows the emotion I'm thrilled. It's not just blank words. Let me give you another example. <sighs> There's another example. That just think about it. It's touching me so much. It's with pure joy. I delivered my bouncing baby girl after waiting to get pregnant for five years. Vanessa Onyida Mola Akeju, which is the girl's name, which is the girl's name, my baby girl. I got pregnant nine months ago and had a graceful pregnancy period and had my baby girl. So it says, is this at this prayer point, you're writing from a place of faith. You're writing from a place of the end result. See, God knows what you need. Stop telling me what your need is. Tell him what you want. It says, ask and you shall receive. If you ask him your need, you receive a need. If you tell him what the end of your need is, someone says, God, please just have mercy on me. That's a good prayer. But why not just tell him the outcome you want? The next thing I want to do is this. The next thing I want to do is this. The next thing I want to do is this. Find at least two Bible verses. Someone says, that supports each of the things you are asking for. Why is that important to you? The power of prayer is predicated on the word of God. Prayer is going back to God and say, God, you said this. Let me tell you what prayer is. This is what prayer is. I tell you, I'll give you $500,000. And you come back to me and say, hey, pastor, you promised you'd give me $500,000. Where is it? That's what prayer is. Prayer is that you said something. Where is it? What is prayer? What prayer is not? I didn't see anything. Just come and say, I want this. That's what prayer is. And that's why, when, that's why the most effective prayer are not based on emotions. So I'm to say, if I cry, if I strip myself naked, see, those things are not by biblical methods of praying. Jesus did not have to strip himself naked to be head of the Father. Jesus didn't even have to cry to be head of the Father. There's nothing wrong with crying. What Jesus always said was that, my Father, you said, like you said, 
like you said, like you said. Are your prayers full of emotions? Are your prayers full? Some people's prayers are full of complaint. That's not what prayer is. True prayer is saying back to God what God promised you. That's what the Bible says. If we ask according to his will, not according to our pain. Some people's prayer is pain. Pain is not prayer. Complaining is not prayer. Threat is not prayer. God, if you don't do it, that's not prayer. God, why are you doing this to me? Why are you neglecting? That's not prayer. Prayer is like, what did God say to you? God says to you that none will be barren. Lord, I thank you because I am fruitful. What is prayer? Prayer is that the Lord will supply my needs. You said you will supply my needs. I say back to God. So find two scriptures that covers the need. And you know what? The process of you looking for those scriptures shows how serious you are and how you believe in the prayer. That covers each of these things. The other thing you have to do to be more effective in prayer is this. Decide ahead of time the times you're going to pray, the times you're going to meditate on the word, and the time you are going to praise God for this outcome. It's so important. You just can't say, I'm going to pray anytime. This is a dedicated period. So every morning we will pray at 6.30 a.m. In the evening, we will just do some other confession in the evening. Just join in. Separate. What time are you going to spend to just focus on prayer? Listen to the messages. Also, read the Bible, listen to a message, because that gives God the opportunity to speak to you. In our, in our fasting and prayer, we wake up early in the morning. And we'll pray together in the evening, we do a confession. So this is what I would say. All the things you wrote down, the three prayer points, every time you wake up in the morning, one of the first things you want to say is that my God is good and kind to me. And based on that, say those three things and say them as a testimony. In the evening before you go back to bed, say those three things, say them as a testimony. Do it throughout the month of March, even when you're not fasting. And determine to separate yourself to listen to sermons and scriptures. And listen, I have huge teaching. I have a teaching on effective praying. It's on Harvest's TV. I have a teaching on how to fast and pray. It's on Harvest's TV. I have some of them on my Instagram at Bolaji Heidi. I have some of them on YouTube at Harvest's TV. I have a, a message that says what to do when life is against you, what to do when your prayer is not answered, how do you handle delays. So many messages. You go there, listen. So why is it important to listen when you're fasting? The more you listen, the more God can speak to you. And I want to encourage you. We pray a next level prayer. And next level prayer is a final buster because the power of God is manifested in such an intense way. Monday to Friday. Join us. Learn how to pray. Learn how to receive results of your prayer. Learn how to receive the manifested power of God. And this is the last thing I'll say to you. When you pray, take note of what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. The power of prayer is not what we say to God. The power of prayer is what God says to us. Take note of what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. He wants to guide you. He loves you. He has huge plans for you. He wants to make you great. He wants to take you from shame to joy. He wants to give you a huge testimony. But how can you do that when you don't take time to listen to him? Someone says, what do I do? Do I just sit down and just wait after prayers? No. As you're praying, he's talking to you. As you spend time listening to those messages I spoke about that's available on YouTube or IGTV, he's talking to you. All you have to do is to learn to hear the voice of God. Someone says, well, I can hear the voice of God. I have a teaching on that also. How to hear the voice of God on dreams and interpretation. It's on Bolaji ID on IG and it's on Harvest TV on, on, the, um, on YouTube. Go back and listen to it. I really pray that this will help you. Let me pray with you. I pray that as you dedicate yourself to fast and pray, that the result of your fasting and prayer become obvious. God will honor your faith. There will be a turnaround in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember, don't pray from the place that God doesn't like me. God is maltreating me. That's a bad place to pray from. Pray from the place that my God is good and is kind to me. I love you so much. I would love to answer your questions.